Hello, everybody. This is Dean Treadway with Movie Geeks United. Uh, here at the uh, incredible 2015 Atlanta Film Festival, where my good friend Ron Hall, aka Stray Dog, just won an award for best documentary feature for Stray Dog. Deborah Granite's great, yes, great new movie. Uh, it's great to see you again. My pleasure, buddy. Always. Um, congratulations on your award. Was Thank that you. was that an incredible surprise to you? It was a surprise to me. Yes, I, I, I wasn't expecting it, and I, you know, for my part, in a documentary, especially, I feel a little undeserving of it because all I did is what I do. My friends and myself we agreed to do this. We just act the way we act. I think the real talent here is the people behind the scenes. It's the cameraman. It's the people who edit the sound to take the noise of the refrigerator running out. <laughs> you know, they adjust the light setting. These are the real people that have the talent yeah. and brought this together. Yeah. Yeah, it's an extraordinary movie. You know, I just posted an article on it this morning telling everybody to go to see it. So I hope I hope the whole thing just sells out tomorrow. It plays tomorrow. Yes. And... You've been, uh, how many festivals have you been to? We met at the New York Film Festival, but... Uh, 10, in, 12, I lose count, honestly. I right. never kept track, but a few. So you've become kind of an old hat in terms of, uh, in terms of doing, uh, uh, doing the festival circuit. Uh, old hat probably fits me pretty well, but I'm kind of new to this industry. <laughs> Well, tell me, tell the audience a little bit, if they're not uh, familiar with Stray Dog, tell the audience a little bit uh, about how you uh, how you came into contact with Deborah Granick, uh, first of all. Well, when I originally came in contact with Deborah Granick, she met me at a biker church. Uh-huh. Uh, now, bikers go to church, often they're talking about their clubhouse from going to church, but this is a bona fide Christian church. And these folks were from New York, and they have never seen a church where the pastor had the front of a Harley for a podium. Uh-huh. And that was our church. Right. And, well, they went down to see it. She seen me there. She comes up to me and introduces herself politely. She was a nice lady, polite lady, and mentioned that they're making the film and asked if I'd be interested in trying out for a part. My first response was like, uh, <laughs> I mean, I ain't no actor, though. You know, I never had any inclination to get into movies or break into them. And she explains to me that uh, the way I present myself and the character that I present is what she's looking for in the person to play this part. Now, I didn't know she was looking for a drug dealer at the time. Right. But it went over good. And I I mean, I was leery about it, but she gave me confidence. She built my confidence up to make me think I could probably do this. Uh-huh. So I went to see Jennifer Lawrence, and I looked at her and says, you got something to say, child, you better say it now. I was in a movie. Right. And that's how it all came about. And she came back after the Winter's Ball was produced, and she wanted to do a documentary on the economic situation across the Midwest. Right. And, I mean, it, it's pretty pretty sad. It really is, you know. But we're a simple people, and we don't need a whole lot. Most of us just have what we need. We're happy with it. Right. Know? And she was discussing that, and my response was, you know, Deborah's is a... We don't know we're poor. We just do not know it. We think we're doing okay, you know. <laughs> but I said, I'll tell you what, Deborah, I will do this. And, and uh, I mean, I'm going to help you either way, whatever you decide. But I will do this. I'll get my friends involved in it. It ain't going to cost nobody nothing. You know, we will do this if we could just get a story out about the veterans and the way we live today. Right. In a way that a brother can find his brotherhood and get with people that understand him and don't judge him. Right. To show a, a lifestyle that works for us. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you will follow us on our motorcycles to D.C. to go visit the Vietnam Memorial Wall, in front of the wall, I'll be happy to do this, and I hope that we can do some good. And she agreed to do that, and this is the result of it, this documentary. Right. Uh, I'm curious, so she she kind of invades your life. Well, with, I wouldn't say it invaded, Not invades, but, yeah, but, but, you know, with the cameras. Yeah. That's not, not, uh, and... Um, and you're you're so incredibly honest in front of the camera. How did she? How do you feel like she elicited that from from but you? And this, not only just you, but your friends as well. Your your friends are very giving and honest. I mean, the friend that's losing his teeth and so forth. Deborah has talent. Yeah. Okay. She's got a good eye. Yeah. And I think she just has a special gift that she can pick out people who are going to work well in what she's doing. Right. You know, she's, she's very skilled in this area. Yeah, she's a very warm person. 
Yes, she is. And uh, so she, she uh, I guess she has an immense talent to, to engender trust and to also, did you feel like, did you, did you, some people say that you never forget that there's a camera there when there's a camera on you, but did you ever forget that there was a I camera? I always because forget. You did? I, uh, <clears throat> I tell you, I, I kind of learned, I think, to ignore cameras just from some of my experiences in Vietnam. Uh -huh. I'll tell you now, these folks in Vietnam, the reporters, yeah. were not our friend. Right. Okay. And I got to the point where I'm going to go and punch that guy out or just go about my business. Right. I ain't like him. And I think I just maybe trained myself to ignore these people. Uh, that's you know? interesting. Because, I mean, I've had words with them before. You right. Know, you go over here and take pictures of my dear friends, I'm going to punch you in your face. Right. And what good is that? You know, no good comes from me getting angry. Right. So I just try not to. Yeah. And I do generally just forget about them. I just do what I do. So <clears throat> when you finally, and the, there's also, you know, it's not only a movie about the, uh, the Midwest and also about the, the, um, the issue with the soldiers coming back with PTSD and so forth, but it's also, it's also a movie about, uh, about your family and about your, uh, your sort of, I don't know, it's not, uh, would you classify it as sort of a, I don't know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, kind of a surprise family for you. It, it kind of is. It kind of is. I, oh, Lord. I, I, I'll tell you, man, I, I had a wife for a lot of years, and I tolerated a lot of stuff, and God bless her, hope she does well. But uh -huh. She certainly didn't treat me well. I mean, this woman, like, I have a heart attack. My friend carries me in a house. She takes my money, my credit card, goes out and has an affair with another woman, whatever. I don't care. Just God bless her. I just don't want to be around her. Right. Okay? But I kind of swore off women for a long time. Right. You know? And I went on the road. I traveled around for a while, me and my little dog. We right. did okay. I pulled into Branson after being on the road for some years. And those folks, man, in Branson, they give me a discount for being a veteran. I ain't never seen nothing like that. Mm. So I just kind of stayed there, you know. I feel welcome. Big motorcycle country, big veteran country, you know. Absolutely. And I just didn't have much use for a woman anymore. I, I'd pretty much been burnt bad enough. Yeah. But I was digging up some bones, or what we call it, going through boxes and stuff, and I found an address of an old platoon sergeant I had in Vietnam. A good man, a very good man. Mm -hmm. But I decided to go down and meet his family in Mexico. And I did that, and that's how I met my wife. Yeah. And I, I clicked with her. You know, we dated for a while. Uh, it, it's a different animal to her. I mean, she's been in and out of this country many, many times, uh -huh. you know. Uh, <laughs> First time she come to visit me, it's like, Jesus Christ, God, he says, uh, I travel to a foreign country, go 1,800 miles, spend a little time with you, I come here, you get naked, go to bed, three dogs get in with you, so where am I going to sleep? <laughs> My dogs sleep on a couch now, we moved out of the RV. I, oh, that's good, that's good yeah, to help. You know, I had a couple of homes there, but I didn't live in them, I just ran them out. My RV was all I needed, I just don't need that much, I'm an old soldier. Yeah. You know. But we do well, and she had a couple of boys. Uh, Good, good, good boys. They're twins, and we worked to get them up here. Uh, a lot of immigration issues to jump through, a lot of money. The, the, the film legally. touches on some of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it does. And it's, man, it's just, it's a very big hassle to do it the right way. People should do it the right way. They should come here. If they're going to be in this country, you know, I, I think it's appropriate that they learn the language. Uh -huh. You know, yo hablo español, yo voy a Mexico. I mean, I tried. I, I will learn enough Spanish to get along. How is okay. your Spanish going? Because you know, you're you. Uh, oh, I can order a taxi, argue what I want. I mean, I, I'm 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 not perfect, but I'm good enough that I will communicate my needs, and that's, I can understand them enough. That's good. And uh, my wife's English is pretty good. The boys uh -huh. are studying hard for a long time, learning English. They're getting very good at it. Right. And I mean, you know, I, I misspell words in four languages. Mm -hmm. You know, spelling so is kind I spent, of a lost well, art. <laughs> I spent, yeah, I spent a lot of my life speaking half English and half something else. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't find fault with people that come here, visit for a few days, go home, don't learn a language. So what? We have tourists that go in other countries all the time and don't learn it. But we, we're going to complain about these people. But if you're going to come here and live, that's different. Right. You know? And I, I, I think people should, just like I go to the trouble to learn Spanish because I do go down to South America a lot. Right. You know, it's just a point of being polite. And in terms of my family getting along with this, it's uh, it's been expensive. And it's been a long haul. Yeah. 
you know, and they do try to learn English. They, the boys, they both graduated high school, but they still have to take a GED here, not to evaluate their education, but to evaluate their English so they get into college. Right. And these boys work hard. They will do whatever they can do to make a living. Yeah. So I'm very pleased with them. And I'm very pleased with my little woman. She's good to me. She sure is. It seems like a, it seems like you're really blessed with a really wonderful I marriage. As it, I mean, as it seems through the movie. I mean, well, it's, you know, I don't want to get too far out of bounds here, but brother, she's 23 years younger than me. She's a very, very pretty girl. I got a pocket full of Viagra and a pocket full of vitamins, and I ain't complaining. <laughs> so whatever that's worth, you can it, you. but she's, she's good. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the subject of. PTSD and the uh, and and how the veterans are being treated. Do you, okay. do you see that getting better? Uh, uh, first of all, the veterans treatment by the VA hospitals, and then I think it gets better because it was exposed, not because the people doing it actually wanted to get better. And I'll have to tell you the truth: all VA hospitals are not that way. But the biggest ones in the major cities, they were. They would hide records. They would lose them. They would give guys appointments for two years down the road. He would never hear from them again. Yes, this happened. Now, the VA I go to in Branson, Missouri, is a very good VA. I got no complaints for these people. But I know it has happened in a lot of places. PTSD is real. I promise you, it is real. And it affects people in ways where you don't even know you have it. Really. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's normal for me. You know. And, and you, you actually, you, you say in the film that you believe, you, you're absolutely sure that PTSD affects everybody that's ever been on a battlefield in a battle you've been situation. On a, you've been in battle, brother. You've been in battle. Your, war, your brain is rewarded. Instantly. It, yeah, instantly. If you've been in battle, yeah, there's something different about you, and it will always be different about you. And I ain't saying it has to be bad. I ain't saying guys with PTSD are dangerous. Right. There are people that like to think this. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, there are guys with PTSD, and, and you know, finally the direction I took is I'm not going to hunt nothing. Uh-huh. I will not hunt an animal. I will not shoot an animal. Right. I mean no harm to any living thing. Yeah. But it is in me that I will do what I have to do if the job calls on it. Right. You know, I know I will do that if I have to. I got to a point in my life where I started getting rid of my weapons because I'm saying I probably just shouldn't have them. Mm. I couldn't get rid of them. I started feeling strange, getting insecure. And I've got my weapons back, and uh-huh. I'm not going to hurt anyone. But right. I will do what has to be done if I'm called to do it. You know, right. in Vietnam, I will say, and I'm not trying to speak for everybody, but I know I'm not alone in this. Is that I did my job. Yep. There was no pleasure in it. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of, a lot of boys that I tell you, we did our job. Yep. It wasn't, wasn't fun. It was not pleasurable, but we did our job. We did not kill babies. I have never seen anyone kill a baby. But I got called a baby killer, and I deserve better. And I ain't nothing special. We all deserve better than mm. uh, Well, it's, a po- it's powerfully, you know, uh, addressed in the film in numerous ways, not only how you deal with your own issues, but how you're helping other people, uh, other veterans, not just from I, I want the help. from... Of course, of course, man. We, we've got a thing. And, and, and I'm very proud of my generation of veterans for this because you will see this on a lot of trucks at veterans events and run to the wall, rolling thunder. It's this sign that says, never again will one generation of veterans turn its back on another. Mm-hmm. And this did happen. And I'm not knocking these World War II boys, God bless them. You know, I love them to death. Mm-hmm. But we go in BFWs and some of them, not all of them, but some of them, and I walked into one, the boys told me they didn't want me in there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't go where I want to, I leave. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't think it was for the same reason that other people protested. I, I did kind of at the time, because nobody liked this. But I got to thinking about it later. I simply think it was because that they wanted to listen to their old music, and we had our thing going on. They just, mm-hmm. you know, and that was probably more of their thing. But it, it's all good. You know, yeah. I ain't mad at nobody about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of things we look back, and it's like, uh, and the same thing with other people. It's had we known better, or if we could have done better, we would have. Yeah. You know, we do we do the best we can with what we know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for your service again. You know, um, I, I know just, that can sound... I just, I did my job, cliche, brother. But you know, and it was my job, and I, nobody owes me anything. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody owes me anything, but I, I appreciate your kind words. Yeah. Uh, and and what you're doing for the veterans is, is amazing. Now, uh, let me ask you this. Since we just got off of the whole uh, American Sniper thing, did you see American Sniper? Did you like it? 
I my like wife it. will not let me watch these movies. She pointed out to me that any time I watch a war movie or something, oh, right. I have nightmares. And I, I never I never really made that connection. Yeah. You know, Talked about it and, in the film. And I would, I, like, I'd, I'd watch a movie about Vietnam. I don't know. It's like I tune out the bad things, you know. I'm looking at a bunch of, of young, brave, honorable men. I'm like, the bad stuff, it just, I don't yeah. really compute it. You know, and but I would never watch the whole thing. I'd watch parts of it now and parts of it later. Uh -huh. But then she pointed out to me that yeah, you watched that movie. You had a nightmare. Just that three times in a row. So is she right? Yeah, she's right. Okay. But I never noticed it. Do you I try and stay away from them then? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. I guess that's flies. Flies. But I have to say, just for the record, I loved American Sniper. I thought it was. I thought oh, I've heard it. I thought it was a really. I've heard it. I thought it was a really great and fair movie. Yeah. Fair, uh, fair and even. Uh, uh, so, at any rate, uh, so you're a big animal lover, I know. Oh yeah, I do. I, you know, that's it, something that's not, that we really connect on. Let me tell you something about veterans and dogs. Okay? Uh -huh. And I will give you my experience. And I, I've talked with other guys about this who seem to feel much in line with the way I do about it. Uh -huh. Is honestly, I don't know. I'm oh, sorry, give me a minute. I don't know that I would be here without my dog. Yeah. You know, there was a time when I pretty much feel like nobody had any use for me. <clears throat> but my dog, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we my dog bonded loved me. on this. Yeah, my dog yeah. loved me when nobody had any use for me. My dog needed me when others didn't. Yeah. You know, and no, I, I don't know that I'd be here without me. Yeah. Yeah, and well, this, gives, you know, this gives guys a reason, you know, mm -hmm. you, you're needed, you accomplish something, you're doing some good, mm -hmm. and it's an important thing for guys to know. Yeah, I mean, with my with my animals, my cats, and I've had dogs before too, but you know, I've I've had animals for the past 20 years, and I felt very down. Yeah. So I deal with depression. I I still think I deal with like a little bit of a PTSD. You, you very thing. well may, man. I mean, it can come from a lot of areas. Just, yeah. You know, severe stress and hardships in your life. And yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I've got a wife now, and I'm lucky now. Yeah. But back in those days, it was just me and my dog. Well, now you, you got know? a wife, dogs. Uh, uh, no, I, I you am blessed. Do you have cats? Do you have cats? Well, or? it was never my cat. The cats were actually strays that showed up, and we fed them. <laughs> but and that's found a them wonderful home, scene, you know? though, with, yeah. with the cats. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just a little uh, baby, you know. Yeah, but you, uh, you know, it, it goes up until the very final shot of the movie. You with animals, I think, and that's a that's a wonderful man. You part. see, you see, my brothers I ride with, we're all yeah. animals, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no these, the, most of these are just kind-hearted, gentle guys. Yeah, man. they're not mean people. Do you wish you had your bike down here in, in, in I Atlanta wish to go? I had my bike. I tell people my bike is my shrink. I need to get air therapy. That's, yeah. that's what we call it. Like, really? Yeah, air therapy. Wow. Yeah, my bike, my shrink, and uh, a cigarette and a coffee is my Prozac, but I only get five a day. Only five? Get five a day. Yeah. You know, I've been to, you know, that's kind of what I smoked when I was smoking cigarettes. I've moved over to the vaporizer. You're going to move Well, over. you know, and I have one, and I uh -huh. use them, but, uh, man, lately... I'm doing a lot of work with my dozer. Uh -huh. I'm working on it. I'm greasy and I'm oily, and I try to smoke with it in guys, and it's all dirty and greasy, and I don't want to eat my grease. Yeah. But no, I had five a day as long as I get one cup of coffee, I'm good with it. But I went to a doctor one time, and they asked me how many how many cigarettes do you smoke a day, and I said I don't know, like three to four or something like that. Mm. He said you're not really a smoker. Right. That well, that, that, that five a day actually <laughs> come from. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I try hard not to lose my temper. I really do. But uh -huh. I kind of, uh, guy kind of treated me the way he shouldn't have treated me one day, and he had a metal cheer on him, and I went to see my shrink and says, I did this, and I feel bad about it, you know? Uh -huh. And he asked what was going on in my life, and I quit smoking. I hadn't had a cigarette in, like, I don't know, three, four weeks, and he says, well, you know, if I help you relax, just do what I, you know, do a few a day, because I... You know, he asked me about when I smoke normally, I drink a car smoke. Five a day ain't gonna hurt you. Just yeah. Do that and keep the edge off. You know, yeah. Do. Yeah, that's good. Um, so, you told me that uh, soon, did you, I remember you saying that, uh, that Stray Dog is, it is gonna get a theatrical release, uh, right? Well, I mean, I can't. You can't. You yeah, can't I don't have anything to do with that. You're right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I do know. 
And what I'm told is that PBS has been given permission to air it on Veterans Day. Which is perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. That's, I can't think of a better movie to see on Veterans Day than this movie. Well, man, all that, I just... I mean, it makes me feel good to hear it. That's but true. I still, I mean, it, you know, I'm, I'm only one of many, man. You I know, know. I mean, all these guys out there, man, they, they did their job. They went there. And I don't want to be singled out as being a special Vietnam veteran. I'm not. I'm one of many. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, they're my brothers. I love them all. But with that said, you know, it's very important to, for, for this movie to get seen so that people, more people realize, not only people who, who aren't veterans... But people who are veterans that don't know where to get the help. Well, so, that, what would you say to them? Man, join your brotherhood. That's a thing. The biker community, and I know it's not exactly the mainstream of society. We're not wearing shark skin suits and wingtip shoes. You're we're not biker, going out kicking brothers. ass on the weekends. But we've got, exactly. You know, we've got a brotherhood that will accept these people and make them feel welcome and make them feel belong. Right. You know, and. When you ride with your brothers, you get back some of that brotherhood that you miss from the military. Mm -hmm. And I've got a personal theory on some of that, too. I think we kind of get addicted to adrenaline. Yeah. And life gets boring, man. It gets Probably. boring for us. But it gives us a reason. Well, that's why you some know, people make movies, I think. I, I, perhaps <laughs> it is. Perhaps it is. But it, it, it gives us a reason. It adds something to our life. It makes us part of something greater than ourselves. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I want people to see this, because I tell you, there are brothers all over this nation in little towns and little country that don't even know we exist. Yeah. You know, and it's real. Yeah. You know, I mean, and you ain't got to have a motorcycle to come ride with us, man. I don't care if you ride your car. Just come spend time with your brothers. We understand each other. Yeah. But we don't judge them. Yeah. It's very important. So, you know, if you feel like you're suffering from this, you know, definitely, uh, definitely search out a chapter. Uh, you know, what would you tell people to search out, actually, besides, would you tell people to, to besides... Well, let me, let me tell you about being a stray dog. Uh-huh. You know? The thing about being a stray dog is, uh, essentially, you're stray. You uh -huh. don't really have anywhere to go where people want to let you in. Right. You don't really have anybody that cares enough about you to feed you. Yeah. You're kind of strung out there on your own. Well, I'm in good company with this name, and I come by it honest for a lot of years, I guess. Yeah. And I got it actually from protecting a stray dog the guy was going to kick. Mm -hmm. You know, because he, he ain't going to do that, brother. I mean, the guy's hungry, he wants to eat. He wishes he had a place to go where people would let him in. He wishes somebody cared something about him. Uh -huh. He'd like to find some companionship sometime. He ain't that much different than me or you, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, there's a lot of these boys out there that have never been able to make a connection to find a home within a bond that will accept them and understand them. Mm -hmm. And we offer that. Yeah. That's what we are. Yeah. So let me ask you this. This is like a little Hollywood question here. But if someone came up to you again and asked you if you wanted to act in a movie, would, would you consider it? Would you say? <laughs> you know, I ain't but really. But play the good guy this time. I never really considered myself as being an actor. Okay, but to tell you the truth, I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, I kind of have. Yeah. I think you've got a. I don't think you've got a natural. Obviously, you've got a natural well, thing know. in front of the camera. You know, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not shy. I get in front of people and talk. It's just something I've done all my life. I yeah. don't have a problem with that. And I've learned this. I guess I've gained some self confidence in myself. You know, I've learned to be the best person you can be, and you're going to have some friends. Yeah. That's all any of us get. Yeah. You know? Yep. And that's all we can do. Exactly. And I will present the people who I am because I've understood, man. I mean, why do you want to pretend to be something else? You'll never know if people accept you or not unless you're real. Yeah. Just be real. And the people who accept you for yourself are just being real are the kind of friends you need. Right. And, that's, that's just, and let all the others go by the wayside. Yeah. If they like me, that's great. Wonderful. If they don't. You know, I ain't gonna worry about it because I don't expect nobody to like me. I ain't nobody cup of tea. Everybody don't have to like me. That's their choice. Well, I just honestly, straight on, I can't imagine anybody watching this movie and saying, you know what? I just don't like that guy. Yeah, <laughs> I told you. I got impossible. an ex wife. I told you, man. I got an ex. <laughs> it, seems, it seems impossible to me. So No, I, there's I, certainly I, people that don't like me, but that's okay. You know, that's their choice. I think you're going to have a great screening tomorrow. I think it's going to be a real exciting time. And again, congratulations on the award. I'm so happy to see you again. You're just a you know, you're just a leather jacket and nah, Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Always. Yeah.
Well, with that, uh, it's Dean Treadway here with Ron Stray Dog Hall, star of Stray Dog, Deborah Granite's new and great documentary. For Movie Geeks United, I'm Dean Treadway here at the Atlanta Film Festival. We'll see you later. See you later, cool. Ron.